everyone, this is Nawel from Belgium and in Montreal with Kylian Lee. She's the writer of this book, The Garçon à la Mer. It's an amazing book. Nice to meet you, Gilan. Nice to meet you, Nawel. Can you introduce yourself? Yes, of course. Uh, my name is Gilan Lee. I try to say that in English, Gilan Lee. Uh, I am a comedian, an actress, a TV host. I'm a professional speaker. I go in schools, I, I go and uh, meet some parents to talk about autism. I am the proud mom of two wonderful child who also, they, they, they have autism, both of them. One is verbal, one is non-verbal and uh, autism became my mission in life yeah. to, uh, to uh, wake up the conscience and also talk about how wonderful those kids are. Yeah, and your book is a bestseller. It is. I am very <laughs> proud of that because autism or handicap is never, never very, very sexy, and a lot of people uh, bought my and most of all they read my book. So I'm very happy about that. Can you share with us a little bit about your two amazing songs? Yes. Yes. I, of course, I love them very deeply, and uh, they are very, they are amazing boys. Uh, uh, my youngest uh, child. Clovis, his name is Clovis. He is a non-verbal and autistic, and uh, but he is full of love. And he, even though he doesn't speak, he can communicate with his love, his eyes. He's very affectionate. He's, uh, but he has a lot of. Uh, he goes to a special needs school, and he works very hard. So I'm very proud of him. And my oldest one, Leo, is a verbal autistic. Kid. He's very intelligent. He has a, uh, uh, he's very a lot of sens uh, sensitivity, a lot of empathy. If someone tells you that autistic person are not empathic, they have a lot of beautiful empathy, and uh, he is uh, very. He loves to draw. He has a lot of talent. So uh, they're yeah, so they're, it's very, it's they're good kids. Yeah, yes, we, yes, we, good kids. Really good. Yes. <laughs> And how did you learn about the diagnosis? Uh, diagnostic for my first kid, Davis, uh, he was two years old and he had a lot of uh, uh, characteristic, uh, like he did a lot of flapping like this, and he did not respond when we called his name. We went, Clavis, Clavis, and he was like more in his bubble. So we went to the doctor, we had an appointment, and one year later, yeah. we had an evaluation with a pedopsychiatrist and uh, we knew he was autistic. And for my oldest one, it was a very different path. Uh, he had this diagnostic only at the age of 12 years old. I, o I always knew there was something with him. But uh, since he's verbal and very intelligent and very charming boy, when he did the evaluation, you know, he was like, oh no, he's not uh, autistic. And, but I always knew. And at 12 years old, he had this uh, diagnostic. And diagnos diagnostic is the key. To yeah. get the services yes. also and yes, to get exactly. into the system. Yes. Yeah. And um, you wanted to talk about the potential of your kids. Yes. Can you talk about it? I think that uh, when you have, when you learn that your kid is autistic, of course, there's a, you are sad. Eh? You don't want your kid to be uh, excluded or you want your kid to have a normal kind of life. But what I've learned with my kid is that they are they have a lot of light also. And in my book, I talk about the good, the good uh, side of uh, having a child who are different, and their potential is so big. And I know that society in the next year, since they are more here in uh, Quebec in North America, uh, we've learned that there is one kid out of has now autism which is a lot of people so since I, I'm very optimistic that in the years to come society is going to adapt to them and because they are they, I, I know that they can work I know that they are they will be good workers because when they do something they do it like 300 percent and they are yes they they, they, they have this preci precision and I know that I am optimistic that society is going to open their minds and their hearts and because my son Leo he wants to be a video game designer yeah, and I know that he is going to do it because and I have faith that it is going to happen but we 
have to talk about like we are doing now. Yeah. And uh, you also talked to me about the services after 21 yes. here in Canada. Yes, it's very unfortunate because now here in Canada, the, the, uh, how it is, uh, how the society works is that they, the autistic kids, they go to school until they are 21 years yeah. old. But after that, there is no more services. Yeah. So the kids, they go to school every day until they're 21. And after, they stay at home yeah. with their parents. And they do not have this precious, precious stimulation that yeah. they need to, uh, to grow even more. So I think like it's very one. sad. Yes. And they, uh, I think that they are not uh, half citizen. They yeah. are citizens. And we should take care of them after 21 years old. And I work very hard. To uh, promote, uh, to, to promote that, and to I uh, work with a, a association of all kinds, and I know that we have to take care of them. And also, me as a parent, I am going to be older, and eventually, I'm sad to say so, but I am going to die like everybody else. And I would like someone to take care of my kids because I did it all my life, and I want someone that I can give the relay to and my kid can have a nice happy life afterwards. Yes. Uh, you say also that accepting your child is something very important. So can you tell us and also share this with all the mothers and fathers? Yes. If you are, my dear, a parent of an autistic kid, you are one lucky parent, let me tell you that. Uh, I think that uh, having autistic kids uh, when you accept it, it is the first step uh, to be happy. Uh, and also not to have irrealistic um, uh, attempt. Uh, don't, uh, don't see your child like, uh, don't go too far, don't see them uh, in university, or just go day by day and just go with what they can give. Uh, because yeah, what they can do, because they can do a lot. But sometimes we ask them to be like us, but they'll never be yeah. like us. They'll always be like them. So first step for me is to accept it. And afterwards, we can be happy. Yeah, and yes. work on their own potential. Yes, yes, they have to work on their potential. If someone asks me, okay, tomorrow you're going to the Olympics, and uh, I'm sorry, but I, I do not, I, I, yeah. I, I, I can't. I am not a sport girl. So for them, if I ask them, if I ask my nonverbal kid, tomorrow you have to speak, he'll go like you won't understand because it's not who he is. I am not an Olympic person, he is not a verbal person. So I have to respect him. That's what I do. Um, do you have any global message to have? I think that difference uh, being different is being unique and being unique is being extraordinary that's what i think so i think that autistic people they have so much to teach us and if we open our heart and our mind and we let them in and we don't just like ask them to be like us which is impossible i think that uh, we can learn a lot about them but we can learn i learned about i learned i learned a lot about myself with my kids I learn simplicity, I learn authenticity. My kids are never rude, they're never mean, they're always gentle and they have this kindness about them. So it made me in contact with my own kindness to be with them. Oh, this is so nice. <laughs> yes. So thank you for this great message, uh, Guylaine. It was amazing to share a moment with you. So this is the book, an amazing book with an amazing mother. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Nawal. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. Bye, everyone. Merci. Bye.